Good morning, family. This is Pastor. It is good to be with you here on this July 5th of 2020. Here we are in a brand new month. To God be the glory. And I pray that even in this season of coronavirus, that you are being safe and taken care of and watched over by the mercy and grace of Almighty God. I pray that all is well with you. It is, again, good to share with you the Word of God. And our lesson today is titled, Samson's Final Victory. Now, our lesson text is Judges chapter 16, verses 21 through 31. Our related scriptures, I would like to share it with Judges uh, chapter 16, verse 15 through the 20th verse. Kind of give you a little insight on the, the story with Delilah. Uh, golden text is, And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. And that is Judges chapter 16, verses 30. Now, today's aim of the lesson is to know that giving in the temptation will always lead to bad results. And that is a very good point to get from this lesson. Giving in to temptation will always lead to bad results. Temptation is all around us. And temptation is something that we will all, each of us will experience all of our lives. Something we can't get away from. And it's not the fact of being tempted that's a sin. It is yielding to the temptation. And remember, there is no temptation that uh, we experience that is not common to man. So when we go through temptation, it is something that's common to others. This is not something unique for us. Uh, other people are experiencing and going through some of the same temptations. But we thank God who always makes a way of escape. And we see that if hopefully if Samson could have took the way of escape, he too could have had a different outcome or a, a different, you know, final uh, chapter of his life could have been totally different. But we're going to share um, some scriptures and I'm going to come back to Judges chapter 16. I'm going to read verses 21 through 31, which is our lesson text. And then I'm going to just, again, I want to reemphasize, kind of bring you up to where we are with Judges chapter 16, uh, verses 15 through 20. And this is his encounter with the woman called Delilah. Now, Judges 16, 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered into our hands our enemy and the store of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars, whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two metal pillars upon which the house stood, 
and on which he was born, of the one with his right hand and on the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself of all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up to be buried between Zorah and Esther in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel for 20 years. And this is telling us the end of Samson's life and how the tragedy of yielding the temptation had had finally come to him with some severe consequences. Now, if you go back to Judges chapter 16, verse 15, I want you to realize that Samson met another lady, another woman. Her name was Delilah, which her name literally means devotee. Just think about that. She was devoted. She was committed. And, you know, theologians think that she was more or less probably a temple prostitute. So Delilah means devoted T. She was a devoted, she was devoted to her profession. Okay, she was committed to her trade. And she was a temple prostitute. And her, her, her whole goal in life was simply what she did was simply for money. So no matter how much she would, tell Samson this and wonderful things. Her whole motivation was simply for money. And she tried time and time again. The Philistines had offered to pay her money. She was hired by the Philistines' rulers to learn the secret of Samson's strength. They knew that Samson had a weakness. And that weakness, of course, Delilah was exploiting. You have to always realize that, you know, sure, we have weaknesses and we're not careful. The enemy will try to use that weakness to get an advantage over us, to ex- to exploit us. And Delilah was the, the bait that the rulers were using. They had agreed to give her 1,100 shekels of silver, which in our today's term would be thousands and thousands of dollars. So everything that they were, Samson was encountering with Delilah was nothing more than simply a business transaction, a business contract. Samson might have been uh, thinking that he was in love or she loved him, but it was nothing more than a business transaction. And that's what sometimes you have to stop and think, you know. A lot of couples sometimes are together, together for the wrong reasons. And I see people, they marry, and, and um, um, sometimes they, it's, it's for the wrong purpose. It can't be f- for some type of a financial benefit. It has to be for the person. It has to be for the individual. And here she was leading Samson on. She was teasing him, telling him, you know, how can you say you love me if you don't tell me the secret to your strength? Time and time again... Samson would share and uh, tell her some type of uh, uh, story, that, and then she would say, the Philistines are upon you, Samson, and he would break the ropes or uh, the beam, whatever, and be as strong as he could be. And then she would simply say, how can you do this to me? I've asked you all time and time again, where is your strength? And you've lied all these times. So this time it says that in verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily for her with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed with death. She stayed on on, on being consistently uh, after him and and, and give me your secret, share me your secret. That should have been an alarm that went off with Samson. Wait a minute. You know, why are you so concerned about the secret? Why are you so concerned about that? Samson, Samson could have simply left and, and got out of that situation. He could have been wise like Joseph. Joseph, too, had a, uh, was at a crossroad where another man's Potiphar's wife made advances at him. 
Now, Joseph had a different outcome. I mean, he didn't yield to that temptation. He fled. All right. Now, of course, we know that Joseph's story ended cause him. She lied on Joseph and got Joseph put in prison. But the end of Joseph's life was better. The latter part was better as a result of making the right decision. He, his latter part was better. He was second in command in Egypt when he was brought out of prison. And he was ruler over all that Egypt had in their possession. So, so same thing. The purpose of temptation ultimately is to, to simply uh, cause us to yield. And you have to realize no matter how attractive or how pleasant the temptation might appear or be, the ultimate goal of the temptation is to bring us to a point of destruction and to death. So it's, it's not there, you know, even though it, it might appear that you're getting by, you're getting away with this temptation, I'm getting away with this sin. Ultimately, the, the goal is simply death. You have to realize it. That's the ultimate goal of temptation is simply to destroy you. It is not to simply uh, make you think that uh, uh, you're getting uh, uh, away with something. You might be getting by, but you're not getting away. There will be consequences when you yield to temptation. And every temptation, the Bible says that God makes a way of escape. So Samson should have had uh, a clue. He should have been aware of the fact that, listen, I've given you several uh, scenarios how my strength would be abated, how my strength would simply be gone. And you've waking me from sleep several times, uh, and, and each time I've proven to you that my strength was there, and now you are saying, how can I say, how, how can thou say that thou love me if you won't tell me your secrets? Isn't that something? A lot of people sometimes are facing that same question. Sometimes young people, you have to face temptation. Sometimes someone that you may like or someone that you might be dating will tell you, how can you say you love me if you don't do certain things, if you don't participate in certain things? How can you say you really, really love me? And see, there you go. There, there you go again. When you're trying to stand upon the principles of God, that same scenario creeps in. How can you really say, if you love me, you would do such and such a thing. If you love me, then you would, you would yield to my request. But that's not true. And we see here in Samson's same scenario that he was, he was simply pressed upon over and over asking if you love me, why don't you tell me the secrets of your strength? And every time that Delilah pressed him, she got closer and closer to the source. And finally, in verse 17, Judges chapter 16, uh, verse 17, that he told her all his heart or mind and said unto her, There have not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. And if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. So now understand, you know, there's a lot of things we hear about this. You know, um, some men won't allow uh, females to cut their hair because of this verse. But Samson's strength was not in his hair. Yes, his, his strength was not in his hair. Samson's strength was in his allegiance, his obedience to God. God had given him specific instructions that he would follow the principles and, and the customs of the Nazarene. All right, so when Samson disobeyed that, uh, that's when the covenant was broken. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, I mean, if you feel strongly about a uh, female cutting your hair, then that's totally up to you. But it's not the fact of the hair as much as the fact of the disobedience that Samson occurred when he shared the secret of his strength uh, to the Lala. And immediately when, you know, he had told all of his heart in verse 18, the Lala saw that she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. 
Then the lords of the Philistines came up, up, up unto her, and in verse 18, and brought money in their hand. Now she said, come on up now. Well, I think I have a secret. But don't you forget the money. Isn't that something? What is the root of all evil? It's not money, but it's the love of money. And here's Samson thinking that you know, he's got something going on. He's thinking that someone possibly cares for him. But all the while, her ultimate agenda and goal was to simply secure the reward for having him released uh, into the hands of the Philistines. So they brought the money. I mean, 1,100 shekels of silver would be thousands upon thousands of dollars that they surrendered. Isn't this something? Money plays such a, a role in the lives of so many people. Think of the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Judas was not offered anything other than money to betray Jesus. And think about that. The, 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 the power and the, and, the, and the influence of money is very powerful. So there, this was nothing more to Delilah. It no, uh, uh, doesn't matter how intimate they were. It doesn't matter how Samson felt. This was nothing more to Delilah than a business transaction. There was actually no love connection between her and Samson. She was exactly what she was. We shouldn't be surprised. It's believed that she was a temple prostitute. And, you know, so that's what they do. So it shouldn't be a surprise to Samson that he is about to be betrayed. That uh, his affection, his love, and you trusted someone who is Samson is about to betray you. And sure enough, she calls him to fall asleep, verse 19, upon her lap. And calls him to call the man to shave his, his seven locks off of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. In verse 20, and he said, the Philistines be, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of the sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Isn't that something? Some said, I'm going to do just like I used to do. I'm, I'm, hey, no problem here. But Samson, you have shared the secrets of your heart. You have trust entrusted your you have placed your confidence and your trust into the hands of Delilah, whose name is devotee, who simply means that she is committed to her trade. Not committed to you, but committed to her trade. And you've given her your secrets. Isn't that something? And sure enough, when Samson awoke, he said, I'm gonna go out just like before. And but he did not know. That the Lord had departed from him. He broke the covenant when he shared the secret. So, so look at the consequences of temptation. And one of the things that David often prayed, he said, Cast me not, Lord, away from thy presence. And take not thy spirit from me. Family, that's what we talked about. And Pastor shares that a lot. A lot of times, it's the sin in our lives that breaks the fellowship. It breaks the intimacy that we have with God. And that's why you should not accommodate sin in your life. You do not want to break the fellowship. You do not want to, to break the intimacy that you and God have of allowing sin to be a part of your life. So, so here's Samson. He has broken the covenant between him and God. And as a result, he didn't even know that the Spirit of the Lord had departed from him. And he was now just a regular mere man. Isn't that something? You have to understand that too. Without God's enabling power, without God's Holy Spirit upon our lives, we too are just mere men. We're just an ordinary people. It is the enabling power of God and His Spirit upon our lives that make us more than just mere men. It makes us God's children and gives us a special privilege to be enabled and empowered by God. So now Samson has been turned over to the Philistines. Delilah is counting her money and she's just said, hey, just another customer as far as she's concerned. 
And she's moving on. She's got the deal. The deal has been transacted. She's got the money that she was promised. Samson might have thought for sure. I can share my heart with this woman. I can share my deepest secrets. Not knowing the whole time that she was setting him up to be betrayed. And look what happens in Judges 16.21. That's where we pick up. The Philistines took him. And put out his eyes. Wow. They took Samson. And they put out his eyes. Now when they say put out. They literally mean to gouge. I mean it wasn't, it wasn't nothing. But it, they literally. It's, 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 like, it's, 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 it's not pretty family. They gouged him out. It's almost like you know. You're, you're, you're cutting something. With a sharp edge. Or, or just gouging it out. I mean, no consideration to the pain. Can you imagine the pain? Can you imagine the agony of going from seeing light and going immediately into pain and darkness? So look at the consequences of sin. First thing they do is make sure that he, his eyes are gouged out, that he will not have any chance to escape as a blind man. Even if he was strong, he still couldn't find his way. Look at the consequences of sin. The Bible says this, and you need to remember this, that sin has pleasure for a season. Oh, Samson looks like he was enjoying himself. He was just simply uh, in the lap of Delilah every night. He was, he, was, he, was, he was yielding to temptation. But he did not realize that the whole time Delilah had an agenda, the whole time that the enemy has an agenda, and that's what I want you to understand. You know, sometimes the enemy will let you participate in something or some type of sin to make you think that, oh, see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Nothing happened. Nothing's wrong. It's like someone who's, who might be drinking or someone who might be trying drugs. You see, it wasn't that bad. Oh, or someone who might be having an inappropriate a sexual relationship outside of marriage. Anything outside of marriage is known as being inappropriate, not in the will of God. So, so a lot of times people say, see, pastor, you talk about all this stuff and nothing has happened. I'm fine. Yeah, but understand, the enemy has always has an agenda. He always has a plan. And it's not for your good. So just because it looks like you're getting away or you... You're getting by. Don't worry. The enemy has an agenda. And he will reveal that it is not for your good. That he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And look at strong man Samson's has now been reduced to a slave. He's been placed in a mill where he is to grind and 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 and, and, and like a slave, to, you know. So so think about that. Wow, I wonder what the thoughts that went through his mind. I wonder what he what he think. Oh, he he couldn't see Delilah anymore. He could only imagine her in his mind. I wonder how he thought. Now locked in a world of darkness, he went from seeing and being free to a world of darkness. And this is an old saying about sin. It says, "Sin will always take you further than you want to go." Sin will always cost you more than you want to pay. So think about that. Sin will take you further than you really want to go. And it will cost you more than you really want to pay. Samson, I, I, you, you loved Delilah. You were, you were living up the life when you were having a good time. But look at what it costs you. So always remember that with sin, there, there's consequences. Samson right now is experiencing the consequence of losing his physical eyesight. He's going from seeing the beautiful sunrise and the beautiful sunsets and the, uh, the crystal blue sky and, and, the, and the fluffy white clouds. All that is a distant memory because the whole time he was involved in this relationship, this Ill Ill illegitimate relationship with Delilah, it was only a business transaction to her. It might have been more, it might have meant more to Samson, but to her, it was simply a business transaction. And time and time again, Samson should have seen that. 
that she tried him and she tested him and she tempted him. He had plenty of opportunities to figure this out. What are you after? Why do you keep asking me about my strength? What is it? What, what business? What does that have to do with our relationship? Time and time again, he had he had God had given him ways of escape that he could have taken and he would not have lost his sight and lost his vision. So think about that. Look at the consequences of sin. Now, they might not appear to be immediate, but the ultimate agenda of the enemy is only to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. So, so here she's telling Samson, you know, of course, uh, how can you say you love me? And eventually Samson said, okay, I prove that I love you. I'm going to tell you the secrets of my heart. And sure enough, uh, he has lost his sight. They were gouged out like like just someone just used a knife and just gouged them out of his eye. So not only was he in pain, but now he's in darkness. Wow. Mm. So I pray, family, don't be tricked and don't be fooled. There are consequences. There are consequences of sin. And, and it doesn't matter how pleasurable it appears to be. There are consequences. So we see here now, family, in this lesson, as we come, it's called Samson's final victory. And we see that Samson is coming to, to, to the end of his life. And, 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 and the Philistines are calling him out to, to have fun, to make sport with him. And, 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 and Samson is being led out by a little boy because he can't see so as they're, they're, they're celebrating the fact that they, that their God has, has brought Samson and, and he's been captured. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, this is verse 26. He said, suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. So we see here Samson had a plan. Now the house was full of men and women and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord. Here's a prayer, family. Now look at this prayer. And that this is a prayer that God honored. It is not a prayer for God to get the glory. It's, it's still Samson has that old spirit of revenge. Even to the end, he's had the spirit of revenge. But God did honor his prayer. But look at what he says. Samson, verse 20, said, called on the Lord and said, Lord, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. So this prayer was, again, somewhat selfish, but God honored it. He said, it wasn't saying, Lord, I pray that you give me strength so I can get, you can get the glory for what I'm about to do. No, Samson is saying, avenge me, Lord, answer this prayer so I can get revenge for what they did to me in my eyes. Now, isn't that something? And sure enough, Samson took hold of the two pillars, middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Look at the consequences of sin. We don't know how old Samson was. We don't know exactly uh, what stage of life he was. But it seems like he still had a lot of life left. But look at the consequences again of sin. Sin caused him to... To lose his sight, and now ultimately his complete destiny is not totally fulfilled, I believe. I think it's been cut short. But God honored his prayer, and Samson dies alone with the Philistines. And he killed more in his death, the Bible says, than he did while he was living. So we look at this, and, and we gain a good insight from this lesson. It's a very good lesson. It's a very powerful lesson. We understand that sin has consequences, and we realize that ultimately, you know, the enemy sometimes 
will allow us to think that we're getting away. We're getting by with something, but you're not. All right, we're not. He's only using that to set you up for something devastating, for something destructive. So you have to keep that in mind. And God will always make a way of escape. So I pray that you've enjoyed this uh, perfecting class as much as I've enjoyed teaching it. Remember, there's always temptation, sure, and we're always tempted. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, your temptation is always there. But God will always make a way of escape. And this story is a very good story that lets us know that Samson had plenty of opportunities not to yield to the temptation. And ultimately, ultimately, for Delilah, who caused him to be captured and placed in prison and to lose his eyes, ultimately for her, it was nothing more than a business transaction, just a deal. Delilah, who name means devotee, it simply was simply a person who was not committed to Samson, but was devoted and committed to her trade as being a temple prostitute. So always remember, family, that uh, God loves us. And again, he gives us boundaries. He gives us parameters that we need to follow. The enemy says you don't have to follow those parameters. And there's no stronger uh, temptation that the enemy uses against God and his people, that is. And that is the, the temptation of sexual sins. Sexual sins can cause so much hardship. Hardship, that is. They can cause so much pain and so much suffering. Because it's, it's the only sin where we utilize our bodies. It literally our physical body is involved. All other sins can, can come against us. But there's that sexual sin that really can cause so much harm. So much damage. And so much pain. So keep that in mind. You know, the enemy wants to make you think that you can, you can have an illegitimate relationship. He wants you to think that you can watch certain things. You can participate in certain things. There's no harm. It's just me. No, I'm not hurting anyone. But always remember, just like Samson, his ultimate goal is to set you up. He only comes to steal and he only comes to kill and destroy. So keep that in mind and always give God the glory because whenever you're tempted, there's nothing new. There's nothing strange. All the temptation, the Bible says, is common to men. So what you experience, others experience the same thing. But one thing you can count on, and that is God will always give you a way of escape so that you'll be able to bear it. So I pray that you've enjoyed this lesson. And I pray that you uh, will continue to, to trust God and, and realize that God is there with you and God will strengthen you and give you the means, the mechanism, and the strength in order to overcome any temptation. To God be the glory. This was Samson's final, final victory against the Philistines. And God will get the glory anyway. And I pray that you will give God the glory and praise for the word that has gone forth. And um, to God be the glory. And I pray that you will continue to be blessed you will continue to pray for us and pray for the church family uh, and pray for one another as God protects us and watches over us during this season. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless. Amen.